<laughs> hey, back out here playing on the Great Pumpkin 1968 Firebird. Um, doing some more body work, and like we said last go around, we're going to work on doing this seam here on the top of this quarter panel. We actually sectioned this thing in, welded in about three quarters of an inch in from this body line. It welded in really nice, very minimal distortion, but we still have some deviations and some problems that need to be addressed for this thing is called ready to be painted. And of course, you got a couple things to keep in mind while doing this procedure. We've got like kind of a dish this direction here, and of course, the whole quarter panel has like a radius front to back. And even here back by the trunk, same thing, they have a dished out panel. So how do you sand that straight? How do you fill that to make it look like it was never repaired? Well, that's what we're going to get in here today. And I'm going to drag you guys along and see if we get this thing taken care of. Let's see if we can get you in here. You can catch what we got to fix here today. If you look right through here, I'm moving the camera around just ever so you see like a, a little dish, a little divot. Um, that's what we're going to work on filling in today. Now, that's the thing that... Uh, Maybe it's not really ready for paint because that stuff's all going to show through your paint job. So we got to get that filled in. We're talking probably less than a 64th or a 16th of an inch of filler, but very minimal. When it comes to body work, it's a game of averages, you know, up and down, ins and outs. But the idea is you want to keep everything as a nice and even and level. So you're going to fill in all the low spots. It's kind of like the you know, price is right. You can't go too high on the metal or you'll completely mess up the entire game. you got to be all below where it needs to be. So that's why I did take the grinder to those welds. And of course it does cause a little bit of a dish that needs to be filled. Now, if I was a, I guess a perfect working with metal, maybe wouldn't need any filler at all, but I'm just not that good. But that's why they make this stuff right here, um, body filler. In particular, this is the all metal stuff. It's metal reinforced body filler. I like to use it over top of my welds. I think it holds up good. If there is any kind of uh, structure issue or anything at all, I've not had any problem with this stuff cracking out. It's a little spendy, a little costly, but it is definitely worth the money. And it, it doesn't sand too bad either. So that's like I said, that's our first coat. We're going to get this thing prepped, put a skim coat of that on there. Then we'll proceed to work on sanding it out. And we're not going to use what other people have called this, the zero grit brick or block, sanding block. So we're just going to let this guy hang out here with us. But there's our go energy there. But we're going to get into using the longer block here. It is a long block, but it actually works really nice for this area here. And I'll show you how to get that in here and then work this out once we get the filler put into place. Well, let's get started. This is the, the long block we're talking about here. This is 80 grit sandpaper. We're going to go over this entire thing and then highlight all the highs and the low spots and determine if there's any really bad areas that need addressed, like as for high spots before we start doing any kind of filler work. Because like I said, it's a game of averages, but at this one time, it's not okay to be way above average because it's going to cause a problem. So... I guess this is the one time you can tell your teacher below average is actually good. But the idea, take the sanding block, we're going to let it rest right on this body line. And kind of work, as you can see, I'm not just going forward and backwards or like this way. I'm going to go up at a 30 degree angle in relationship from this body line to that body line and working it up to it. Um, this doesn't have to be super critical. I'm just using this to highlight our troubled areas. show you guys here what we find. I'm going to find a few spots here that are going to need a dress before we've got to do any kind of filler work it looks like. Now, once I've done that, you can really see the contrast. Here's where the primer's been sanded. This is going to be a low spot. And this right here, you can see the bare metal, pretty small area, but it is a bare spot of metal. Let's see if we get the light just right. So these are going to be spots that may cause us a trouble uh, when we go to try to fill us in. Obviously, we're going to need filler here, but this is all nice and level where it's evenly colored. Um, same thing, we got a little spots there where it's shiny, where the primer has not been hit yet. Same thing, a little bit of a metal spot. So you may have to work these spots with a hammer a little bit. Now we're talking super small amount. I could probably cover this whole thing with a layer of, of body filler and bury those spots underneath. But I'm going to try to get those spots to go down just a little bit so it takes even less filler to get the game of averages to win here. But you get the idea of what I did. It was really quick. Um, this is obviously a little larger low spot, but... You can barely fill with your hands, but this is one of those things you can see it, and that definitely helped that develop that skill or that you know feel of highs and lows. I can feel that spot and that spot, but if you were to close your eyes, you can still see that in your mind when you start working that out. So this is a good way maybe to practice that, um, get a feel for it kind of thing. But this feels real nice. This little bit of a low spot there, so 
Doesn't look too bad, but we're gonna work on using a little bit of a body hammer and just slightly work these areas down. Just just maybe match this area here just a little bit below grade. So when we put the filler on, very little filler will need to be on here to get the job done. Now I can't get to the back side of this to hold a dolly on it, but we're just gonna work the metal down just a little bit. That's why we highlight these spots. And you get the idea. Any spot where the metal is shiny and sticking up, just work the area around it. Just, you know, you see moderate hits. You're not hitting for home runs here, trying to put the hammer through the quarter panel. Just enough to work the high spots down. I do the same thing to all these spots here and then we'll go ahead and scuff all these low areas here and prep those for our body filler okay now i'm happy with all those spots they're just you can't really feel them but they're slightly i guess lower now so that those are no longer our high spots so i'm going to take my normal red scotch right now and go ahead and hit all the spots for all the low spots you'll see all of them disappear now and that'd be in preparation for our body filler Now, I know there's a few spots of bare metal here now at this point, but the all metal actually works good against bare steel. It's not completely bare metal. You could come back and epoxy prime this, I suppose. But I still plan on doing those. Probably once I put that on, I'll probably put another coat of epoxy on it anyway. We get the idea. Get this all scuffed up and we'll put a skim coat of uh, all metal on that then. Alright, I like it. Let's get some all metal mixed up and get that filled in. I've got this all mixed up here and it doesn't really look like a whole lot of good stuff. Well, I seem to have lost the footage of me spreading this all out, um, actually getting it all laid on there. It's on real thin, but it's got a couple little lines here that I'm going to block out with our longer block. I'm going to leave the 80 grit sandpaper on it and get this thing knocked out real quick. Hopefully, get the thing leveled off and see if there's any surprises once we're all done. Again, 80 grit. I'm going to let this thing glide across and go from about where the little studs here for the vinyl top to this body line. And keep working it kind of at a 30 degree angle. Like, here's our straight line, so 30 degrees this way. Then back this way until we get it all leveled off. Hopefully, and not burn through anywhere. I think we got it all sanded off here. Let's take a see what we got. And remember, this is just our first pass with some kind of body filler, and I'd say came out pretty good. A little low spot here, but I'll show you what we have. I think just one little coat of uh, glaze compound, or should be a glazing putty, it should be pretty All good. Right, so what do we look like? We'll check this out here. Got a little of a low spot right there still, but that's okay. We can fill that in with a little bit of filler. You can see the silver kind of bleeding through here. A little bit of a low divot right there. That there is as far as we can see because we're hitting metal hitting metal so we can't keep grooving this out. So it's actually laying out pretty decent. The edges are laying out pretty slick too. So I think we're to the point now, just need to put a coat of that, uh, I guess, glaze putty on there. Let that set up and then block sand out. A little of a low spot right there. You can see where the, it hasn't, not like a light gray, more of a silver still like the all metal. So other than that, looks pretty good. Well, I guess we call this glazing putty finishing putty, but this is that stuff that spreads a whole lot easier. And I'm going to try something I haven't done before. I bought some of those really cool metal spreaders. 
I thought we'd give one of those a shot and see if I can do any more good or with that, but I don't know what to expect here, but we're about to find out. The same thing, mix it up, try not to get air bubbles or air pockets in your filler. Uh, kind of knead it, kind of keep stretching it flat, and hope you get all the air worked out of it and mixed up thoroughly. And we'll put a coat of this on here, and hope for this to be the one last pass kind of thing. So it doesn't work much different than a plastic spreader. It's every little cleaner, I think. And these aren't any special metal spreaders. They're your, you can say, Harbor Freight special ones. So they may be a better quality one out there, but I thought I'd try it out. I don't know if it's really that much of an advantage or not. Same idea. I'm trying to get the filler to spread across all the area that I've worked to fill in any of the sand scratch marks. The 80 grit paper that I already used. I need to make sure that's not going to bleed back through because I want to stop at 320 and say ready for primer kind of thing. But see how this goes. So I guess that was the answer to a question I wasn't asked. How far do you spread it out? Well, wherever I've sanded it, I got to fill in those sand scratch marks. it now it's time to go ahead and start sanding it we're going to follow the same technique and we'll start from this body line up to here about 30 degrees and working our way forward and backwards until hopefully it all levels off and so there's always that question when do you stop sanding well hopefully all of it changes color because you can kind of tell it changes from like almost like a, a green to a yellow so that's that's the color if it's all good all it should be nice and even yellow or primer should be any metal spots or any dark green spots left And again, leaving the sanding block laying on that edge of the body. So I'm going to push it just a little bit to follow the contour, but just kind of let the block slide. I'm only resting my fingers on the ends of this block. I'm not pushing on, I'm not hanging my body weight on it. I'm letting the block do the work, and that's what that means. Let, let it do its thing. And again, I don't go just this direction. We're going to cut lines right into this uh, filler. And you'll see the lines in your finished body work. So same idea, about 30 degrees this way, and come back this way, and then X pattern. So the time it's done sand, you'll see mark this way and this way. Now this is 80 grit, so I'm just using this to get the close shape of this thing. I'm not gonna dig all the way through. Once I get everything looking about like that, then I'm gonna change over to my uh, 180, and then go ahead and level it all off real nice. all the high spots are knocked out of it. I'm going to change over to 180 grit paper and continue the same process. Change this up to the 180 grit and do the whole thing again. And hopefully that should get us where we need to be hit it with 320 and that's ready to be painted then. Still the same idea. I knocked all the rough off with the 80 grit the same process here this continues to level it off and smooth out our results Well, 
pretty good. So that was just finished with the 180. I think we'll hit it with 320. And make sure I don't have any weird spots in it. And if it all looks good, I think we'll be done. See you later, 180. And I said we're going out with the uh, 320. Let's do the same thing here. It's actually fitting out pretty decent. Now the 320 will be fine enough sandpaper when it's all said and done. If I have no more blemishes, I can go ahead and prime it at that point. But I'm thinking the amount of bare metal I've actually poked back through, I think I'm gonna go back with an epoxy primer first. in here look at this here wow, that actually looks pretty nice well, let's take a look, see what we got here. Now, all said and done, this looks absolutely nothing like a weld seam. You can see the all metal. Here's our uh, finishing putty and everything else. But um, I assure you, this actually feels acceptable. So you can't go by looks alone. This is one of those things you need to actually do blind or assume nothing. It's a, th it's a game of averages. You want to level everything off, feather it off to where it disappears and stays level or at least equals out across the radius. So there's no high or low deviations. You could use this short block, but I'm afraid you may get some of this going on in some of the body work. But, um, of course, when you guys see this car is all said and done, it looks really nice. Now, it feels good. Now, if you can see right here, let me get the camera to focus there. See that sand mark there in these three or four this way? This is all acceptable. It's all the green where it's actually sanded out, but that will probably bleed back through. So I need to keep working that just a little bit more with the 320 to see if I can erase those lines. Those are the sanding marks that I don't want to leave in the putty, but other than that, the rest of it looks pretty good. Hey, so there you have it, all said and done. Finished off a 320 grit sandpaper, ready to be primed. 320 is the best place I feel to stop. It doesn't bleed back through the sanding marks. Then when I put the, I'm gonna go with an epoxy primer over top of these spots here I've already repaired. It's gonna take care of all those bare metal spots I have exposed. And it's also going to seal up this putty so when I put my high build primer on it, it doesn't soak up like a sponge and stays nice and level. It'll help increase the speed as for block sanding it and getting it back up in shape. And of course, in the future, like a year from now, as the stuff starts to shrink a little bit, it'll definitely help prevent the bleed through of those sanding marks. Because I just don't like that. It's that little thing that just drives me nuts. I can see that. I've learned some of that stuff the hard way. Now, again, there's lots of opinions on body work. This is just how I do it. The right way, the wrong way, and then the VVG way, right? Well, that's just what we're doing here. So hope this, these tips help you out or maybe you learn a little bit of something or gain some confidence that you can do this at home in your two-car garage, which, by the way, my door is shut because it is snowing today here in Indiana. So much for spring-like weather. Hopefully soon it's going to warm because I want to open that door up, get some blue skies and some sunshine in here. I'm kind of feeling claustrophobic over the winter. I'm ready to get outside and play. But anyway... Hope you guys found these tips useful or helpful. And of course, anything I can help you with in your journey, let me know just the same. And of course, thank you all of you viewers who have been helping me out sharing this stuff on Facebook, Instagram, whatever the heck all that stuff is. Liking and sharing it has definitely helped the growth of the channel. And you guys continue to do that. I definitely appreciate that because for some crazy reason, my new challenge is I want to see if I can hit 5,000 subscribers. So I know it doesn't happen without your guys' help. And you watching these crazy videos, what the heck I'm doing out here in the garage. So... Nonetheless, it's going to wrap it up this time around. Uh, I may do some priming. I may do some more body work. I got fenders. I got doors. I got a hood. I got plenty of body work yet to do. So not probably my favorite part because it's a very dirty job, kind of dusty. But nonetheless, I am done for the day. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I hope you guys found this stuff helpful and useful. And whatever the heck we get into next time, hope that we see you then. See you then.